So is breakfast really the most important meal of the day or is skipping it just another one of those secrets for weight loss? Well, the science on this actually may surprise you. If you're one of those who've been confused by all the conflicting advice about breakfast, I promise you're not alone. One day we're told it's essential for metabolism and the next day we hear intermittent fasting and skipping breakfast is the key to losing fat. Today, I'm going to be breaking down what the research actually shows about breakfast so you can make the right decision for your body and also for your goals. And stick around till the end because the answer isn't really the same for everyone. Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Andres Ayesta here. I'm a registered dietitian and I'm the founder of Planners Nutrition. I work with people over 30 usually who want to get to the next level in their health and fitness while trying to balance a busy life with hectic schedules. And breakfast is probably one of the most common topics that comes up with my clients. So today I'm going to be sharing science-backed truth about breakfast because that's the thing about me. I'm an evidence-based practitioner and dietitian, so I like to always back everything up with science. And literally, we're going to talk about whether skipping breakfast, it helps maybe hurts your metabolism, who might benefit from eating it, and who might actually do better without it. If you're new here and you're someone who wants evidence-based nutrition advice without the hype, make sure you hit that subscribe button right now so you don't miss any future videos where I break down nutrition myths and give practical strategies that actually work. Now, the idea that breakfast is the most important meal of the day actually started as a marketing campaign in early 1900s to sell more cereal products, but that doesn't automatically make it wrong. In recent years, intermittent fasting protocols like 16A which I've talked about in this channel, which often involves skipping breakfast, have gained a ton of popularity for weight loss and metabolic health. Now, the advocates of this claim that it helps optimize fat burning and improving insulin sensitivity. Here's what makes this topic confusing. We have research supporting both sides of the argument. Some studies show that breakfast eaters tend to have better overall health markers, while others demonstrate that the benefits from extending your overnight fats are actually going to be nice. So let's dig into the actual science to see what's going on in here. First, let's tackle the common claim that eating breakfast jump starts your metabolism. This is actually a myth. The thermic effect of food, which is the calories burned during digestion, happens whenever you eat, regardless of the timing. Now, what truly matters for your metabolism is your total daily food intake, not when you consume those calories. When we look at metabolic studies, what we typically tend to find is interesting. Extending your overnight fast for at least 16 hours can improve metabolic health indicators because your blood sugar and insulin levels decrease, and this allows your body to access fat stores for energy. Now, this is the principle behind intermittent fasting. However, there's a counterpoint to this. There's even research showing that skipping breakfast can increase leptin production, which is the hormone that actually stimulates appetite, potentially making breakfast skippers more likely to crave high calorie foods later in the day. In fact, in this systematic review, looking at nine different studies and the association between breakfast skipping and weight gain found that skippers tend to have a higher weight compared to those who eat their breakfast every morning. And this matches what many of my clients report when they skip breakfast breakfast, they typically end up over consuming later, particularly at night. So what you'll find is a lot of these benefits that breakfast keepers typically have around metabolism and insulin sensitivity are just simply related to the fact that they're eating or consuming less calories overall. But that typically gets negated if they're still consuming a ton of calories the rest of the day. This is actually what happened to me when I was doing intermittent fasting because I was definitely eating a lot in the times that I was supposed to be eating when I was keeping breakfast because I have a big appetite. So what's happening here then? And what should you do? Well, it turns out both patterns can really work, but through different mechanisms. And the key is understanding your unique response. So let's first talk and look at the hormonal impact of breakfast choices. Your decision about breakfast can have a really big impact on the hormones that control your hunger and fullness throughout the day. And we briefly talked about this in the previous section. When your stomach is empty in the morning, it produces ghrelin, which is a hunger hormone that signals your brain it's time to eat. And after you eat, ghrelin levels decrease, helping you feel satisfied. Meanwhile, leptin produced in your fat cells signals fullness for your brain. The interplay between ghrelin and leptin is what regulates your appetite throughout the day. Now, what's fascinating is how breakfast affects these hormones. Research shows that insulin levels after fasting are negatively associated with food intake, while leptin, ghrelin, and orexin A levels are positively associated with intake. This means your hormonal balance in the morning can significantly influence how much you eat. Now, here's what's critical to understand. The macronutrient composition of your breakfast 
matters tremendously. A high-protein breakfast reduces ghrelin levels more effectively than high-carbohydrate breakfast, helping better control of hunger throughout the day. This is why many people who eat sugary breakfast end up hungry again shortly after. This is the issue that I have with the cereal in the morning type of situation when there's not a really good source of protein added into that. And this is why a lot of the intermittent fasting cultists and the people that are supporting this and then go against like, you know, big cereal are saying, which I get, I now understand. I'm not telling you that your breakfast should be composed of just cornflakes or frosted flakes in the morning. So now what we're going to do is we're going to split two groups of people who might benefit from eating breakfast and those who probably wouldn't. Now, based on the research, there's a couple groups that typically benefit from eating breakfast. First, we're going to have children and adolescents. There's a systematic review published in Nutrition Research Reviews and analyzed dozens of studies and concluded that breakfast has a positive short-term effect on certain cognitive functions in children, which is really important as far as mental development. I'm a dad, so this is definitely something that I really want to encourage my son to do. Another study in the journal Nutrients found that adolescents who consumed breakfast just before cognitive testing perform better than those who skipped it. And this really highlights breakfast important for academic performance. Second, people with diabetes or blood sugar regulation issues. There's a clinical trial published in the Annals of Internal Medicine. It demonstrated that the people or the some of the individuals with impaired glucose tolerance, which are the people that have insulin sensitive issues, which are going to be those with diabetes or insulin resistance, when they consume a low glycemic load breakfast, significantly improve cognitive performance to compared to high glycemic load options. Imagine like, you know, a low glycemic, it's going to be something like oats versus consuming maybe white bread or cereal. So this suggests that breakfast composition is really particularly important for those with metabolic concerns. The third group of people, it's active individuals and athletes. And for this group, breakfast, it's so important in glycogen's synthesis, which is the way that your body stores carbohydrate. There's a very interesting comprehensive review done in sports medicine that explained that dietary carbs or your carbohydrates that you're consuming and its availability is a super important factor for resting muscle glycogen, which is the amount of energy your body stores inside of your muscles. While exercise intensity and baseline glycogen levels are key factors that determine how your body's going to use those carbs during exercise. This is very important for endurance athletes or those doing morning workouts. But hey, I wanted to take a quick break before we dive back into today's topic because if you've been watching my content and thinking like man I need something like this in my life or at least a lot of the things that you know I'm teaching and how to implement it let me tell you real quick about our program we have something known as the blueprint method it's a step-by-step coaching system that it's designed to help high-performing men and some women finally get lean strong and energized but not only this but also sustaining this in the long term and we do this without any type of crash diets or unrealistic routines we work with hundreds of clients to date there's uh, Mike can hear who dropped 20 pounds and regained his confidence after struggling for years or James who's a busy dad who built muscle improved his labs and still enjoys Friday night pizza with his family so if you're ready to stop guessing and finally follow a system that works I want to invite you to book a free metabolic audit we'll talk about your goals we're actually going to walk you through your metabolism and figure out obviously areas of improvement and we're going to give you a bit of a game plan to go from there and if you need our help and want us to support you we can talk about that as well the link to book that call is inside of the description box so make sure you check it out. All right, let's get back to it. So who might benefit from skipping breakfast? On the flip side of the whole conversation we've had, there are people who do better without breakfast. First, those practicing intermittent fasting protocols. I have been that person. There's a meta analysis published in the European Journal of Nutrition that reviewed multiple clinical trials and found that intermittent fasting regimens, which often involve skipping breakfast, can really produce really beneficial effects in body weight and glucose metabolism in certain individuals. So that's a group of people that definitely can benefit from that. Second, going to be people who genuinely aren't hungry in the morning and they may just need to force themselves to eat when they're told you need to eat breakfast. There's nothing special about breakfast and skipping it doesn't automatically make you overeat or gain weight if your overall diet is healthy. I'm going to make that important point if your overall diet is healthy. The third group of people are going to be those who respond well to a longer fasting period. For example, there's a systematic review in sports medicine that examined the effects of carbohydrate intake on strength and resistance training, and it found that in the majority of studies, acute carbohydrate supplementation like breakfast did not improve performance compared to fasting conditions, which challenges the notion that pre-workout breakfasts are essential for everyone. In fact, it's interesting because Saturday workouts for me, which are like my tougher workouts, 
and they're ones that are going to be higher intensity are done fasted. Now, I do have a good amount of carbohydrates the night before, but I noticed that I feel really good when I'm training in the morning. So I think it's really context dependent. Now, it is still important to note that there's a clinical trial published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that did discover that while breakfast skipping can increase energy expenditure, it also increased something called as your postprandial insulin concentrations, which is basically when you cut your fast, your insulin levels rise more than what they're typically accustomed or normally used to rise to the levels of. So that may compromise metabolism in certain ways. So this is something that we're still don't necessarily know, but I guess it really depends on how are you breaking your fast. If you're breaking your fast with a 2000 calorie meal, maybe for some people, that's not going to be the smartest choice. Now, the question becomes, how do you determine what's right for you? With all this conflicting information, it's hard to do that. So there are four practical questions that I put together for you guys to, you can ask yourself to figure it out what's best for you. First, track your hunger signals. First, so do you wake up hungry? If yes, maybe your body's likely asking for fuel and, and fighting this natural signal may backfire a little bit later and you may be overeating a lot more and consuming a lot more calories than what you need. Second, you gotta monitor your energy and your cognitive function, which is the way you're feeling mentally. If you skip breakfast, do you feel sharp and focused or fog? foggy and irritable. Your mental performance is honestly going to be one of the most important key indicators. Third is consider your health goals and conditions. If you have diabetes, metabolic syndrome, or blood sugar issues, breakfast may help with glucose regulations for the reasons we just talked about. Now, while intermittent fasting can lead to weight loss, the effects are similar to continuous energy restriction, which means if you cut calories, if, if you're consuming only 1,500 calories, which is what's required, let's, miss it, let's say that's what's required for you to lose weight, and you consume it between 1 o'clock and 9 nine o'clock at night and that's an intermittent fasting regimen and you skip breakfast and you're consuming the same 1500 calories with breakfast lunch and dinner they're just going to be smaller meals more spaced out what research shows is the differences between weight loss when calories and protein are the same are minimal or none maybe there's a slight um, advantage on intermittent fasting regimens but i think it's also because of the fact that you have such a shorter window of time to consume calories that most likely you're it's easier to adhere to a calorie um, intake compared to when you have them spread out a little bit more throughout the day. Fourth and last, look at your exercise routine. If you're physically active, especially in the morning, activities of longer duration and lower intensity generally cause a decline in blood glucose levels. And this makes fueling and eating more important. Here's what I would do if I were you and my recommendation. Try both approaches for a week, each of them. Eat a balanced protein-rich breakfast one week, then try skipping breakfast the next. Track your energy, your hunger, your workout performance, and overall well-being. Your body will give you valuable feedback about what works better for you? Remember that even with these patterns, the quality of what you eat really matters. Whether you're eating breakfast or practicing intermittent fasting, you're still needing to prioritize whole nutrient-dense foods when you do actually eat. But there you have it. That's the evidence-based truth about breakfast. The best approach isn't really universal. It really depends on your goals, your unique body, your lifestyle, your goals. But I would love to know, are you a breakfast eater or a breakfast skipper? Drop a comment below and let me know what works best for you and why. And if you found this helpful, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications for more evidence-based nutrition advice from a registered dietitian and check out the description below for a few freebies that I can give you and that potentially are going to help you in your journey. That's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.